Boston Business School, Jody Mendoza came up with an idea to provide Latin Americans living in the greater Boston area with a new nightclub destination. Even before graduating, she found downtown space to rent and successfully navigated a partnership agreement. But that all seems like ancient history as her vision, Mojito's Nightclub, has not only come to fruition, but has also already been operating for eight years. Now, Jody believes she's in a position to do even better by creatively renovating her back of house or behind the scenes space, adding food facilities so she can begin serving tapas style lunch. She's well aware yet undaunted by the large number of choices already competing in the Boston luncheon scene, yet still believes she can add great value. Jody, welcome to the Language of Business. Thank you. So when did you first open Mojitos Nightclub and how have things changed operationally over the years? We opened Mojitos in 2005 and things have, uh, have changed very, very much. We started off as more of a you know, friendly with the staff, kind of a casual business environment, uh, almost a mom and pop feel. Sure. And then we kind of graduated and grew into a more corporate, a lot more rules, a lot more regulation. And we found that rather than to keep people back, that really allowed them to thrive more. Would you say that the nightclub is running well now operationally? And at what point since 2005 did you wake up one morning and say, we got it, or at least we're moving forward to say we've got it? Well, I'm very happy with where it is right now. Um, I would say, and this is looking back. Sure. At the time, of course, um, you know, you always think you're doing quite well. Right. And then it's I was- It's amazing how that happens. It, it? Right? <laughs> but it's, I would say in 2010, we did a round of renovations. And what that allowed us to do was kind of respond to what the customers had been asking for. It allowed us to maximize the utilization of the space. It allowed us to make the, the customer flow. The front of house flow. space, you're saying, not exactly. the back, right? not the the front back of house. house. Right. And it allowed us to make um, the flow of traffic much better within the club, so the things were just smoother. And okay. it was just a better experience. But let's talk about the customer counts for a second. Mm -hmm. How do you get customers, albeit on multiple levels, which I've sort of found out in preparation for our interview, how do you control them without offending them given that this is an entertainment venue? That's a really interesting point. And because of the type of business we have, there are so many rules and regulations that we need to follow. So what we have to do, we have to kind of approach it in a couple different ways. The first is we have to make sure that our staff are very well educated. And they're well educated in terms of how to communicate and when with When you say people. well educated in terms of work in college or in graduate school no. or well trained well and well educated trained. in the ways that you do your thing? Exactly. Well okay. educated in the sense that they need to be able to communicate our message. They need to believe in what it is that they're saying and they need to be able to say it in a way that when patrons come in, they're not going to feel offended that they've been redirected. And there's also a certain amount of education in terms of the customer, and that comes through marketing. So the customers know when they come in to Mojitos that they're going to have maybe a little bit of a longer wait outside, maybe a few more rules and regulations that they might experience sure. at another place, but the overall experience is well worth the extra effort. So the education, the training that you put your employees through, is it used on gut feel? Is it based on some widespread accepted management approach? Help us to understand and our viewers to understand how you sort of get it from your head into the employee's ears. Um, of course, I I take bits and pieces from everything from right. from the you know the experience I got learning at Boston College, yep. um, but also just the experience I have in the business is largely what drives it. So that you understand how far you can what you can expect of your employees, you understand how the limits of what you can push them, you understand what customers are willing where their limits are as well, so that you can still maintain a very positive and great experience for them, but still be able to comply with all the city rules and regulations. You're watching The Language of Business. I'm Greg Stoller, and we're talking with Jody Mendoza, who has renovated the building which houses her current business and creatively updated it so she can start a second company within it. How has your expansion into food gone, and when and why did you decide to expand in this fashion? Well, we really just reached maximum 
booking capacity. From the nightclub perspective. From the nightclub right. perspective. You know, there's only a certain number of nights that people want to go out and right. have a nightclub experience. So I take it you're not open seven days a week? We are not. Okay. So we were just open pretty much three, sometimes four nights a week. So I assume it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday? Exactly. Yeah. Now, the problem is we're located in downtown. Right. So obviously rents are very high. There's a lot of expenses that come with that. At the same time, we have a gorgeous space that's completely underutilized. It's open with you know, closed for business, but it's just a wide open, beautiful space, and we really wanted to get. And more you're not out only of it. talking Monday through Wednesday; you're talking during the daytime hours as well. Exactly. Okay. So, how different are the skill sets and the knowledge base to go from nightclub management and making it run well, taking a phrase from you, into tapas style lunch? Well, I would say that not just between nightclub and restaurant, but I would say kind of across any sort of business where you deal with people, you're using a pretty common skill set. You need to understand people. You need to understand how to get the most out of your staff. You need to have a very clear, coherent message, and you need to be able to communicate that message and to have your staff further communicate that message. So how much of your staff do you use either on the non-operating nights for mojitos or during the day for lunch? And of course, the corollary to that question is how much of your customer base is overlapping? No overlap on customer base, no overlap on staff with the exception of management. Okay, so you've now basically been able to turn over a new leaf yes. and you're starting with brand new customers and brand new staff as well. Absolutely. Are you hoping to cross market? Uh, very little. It's really uh, an entirely different concept, and I don't want to cannibalize off of the business that we have. Sure. Now, if you'll excuse the pun, since you're in the nightclub business, what keeps you up at night, uh, if anything, about this latest expansion into food? No matter what, as an entrepreneur, you always second guess yourself. Right. So I always wonder, you know, did I, did I read into what people want right? Right. Did, am I making the right choices? And am I communicating the choices that I have made um, properly to the staff and to the customers? But this isn't your first day on the job. I mean, you've been at this since 2005. Do you think that you're making more right decisions than wrong decisions? And I don't mean that facetiously, having now had you know, eight or nine years of, of experience under your belt? Absolutely. But I also think that one of the strengths that I have is that I never get comfortable. So, and you're always looking to do better and to absolutely. goose your margins or do whatever you can. Exactly. So obviously you've been able to articulate what's made the nightclub successful from both an operational and a financial standpoint. Now putting on your restaurant hat, how will you determine your break even? Or how will you determine success? Will it be based on customer counts? Will it be based on margins? Will it be based on operational efficiency? Help us and our viewers to understand how the sort of Mendoza, never satisfied concept is now going to be having that spotlight shine on, on Tapas. Well, I think the first thing is it all comes down to, uh, I mean, this is a business. Right. So it comes down to the bottom line. You know, what is our, at what point are we profitable? Right. But there is a, a bit of time between starting it to where you expect to become profitable. And I would say all of those other things you mentioned are things that give me a higher tolerance towards that um, making it all worthwhile, that time between starting it and actually gaining profitability, then you're worried about, well, you know, what about our brand overall? How are, you know, are we, you know, maximizing our So what you're capacity? saying is you might be able to accept six months, even nine months of losses, knowing that you're going to come out stronger on the other end because you have to start somewhere, et cetera. Exactly. And because, because it is a supporting business to the other business, then there is a higher threshold, uh, the higher tolerance. You can use the profits from one to subsidize the exactly. losses of the other. Are you sorry you didn't do this three years ago? No, I think it's perfect timing. Anything sooner might have been too tough. Great, thanks, Jody. Thanks. Jody Mendoza, nightclub entrepreneur and now restaurateur. In this episode, we looked at the importance of effectively managing operations in order to increase the probability of success for companies. Next time on Language of Business, we'll look at how companies are incorporated and the overall legal support, which goes into coordinating hiring, fundraising, and investment as we delve into the legal section of the business plan. I'm Greg Stoller, and thank you for watching The Language of Business.